The next book I have is a book of literary essays and literary criticism with the occasional book review thrown in. Um, never explicitly refers to them as book reviews, but that's what they seem to be. It's called uh, The Broken Estate, Essays on Literature and Belief by James Wood. You can't accuse James Wood of lacking range, that's for sure. Uh, these essays really run the gamut in terms of subject matter, from Harold Bloom's influence on Shakespeare studies to the theology, uh, what he calls the theology of George Steiner, another literary critic, to the lasting, though indirect, impl impact of uh, Ernst Stringo, the 19th century theologian and novelist. Unfortunately, had I not taken notes as I read these two dozen or so essays, I would have quickly forgotten about most of the arguments presented in the book. At their worst, they are uncontroversial and too subtle, perhaps, to make an impression, a lasting impression, at least for me. Uh, there are a few, though, that are fascinating and thought-provoking enough to make you reconsider the topic at hand, but I think they're the exception in an otherwise relatively pedestrian set of essays. Wood has the odd habit of writing something vaguely resembling a book review, which in reality is just an opportunity for him to get on a soapbox concerning the subject at hand. Uh, this is precisely what he does in the aforementioned essay entitled Shakespeare in Bloom, of course referencing Harold Bloom. Uh, it purports to be a review of Bloom's book Shakespeare, the Invention of the Human. It, in a 16-page long review, though, he mentions the book perhaps two or three times, choosing to spend most of his time wrapped up in a discussion of the place of, uh, a discussion of the place of ontology in artistic creativity. Uh, namely, he's interested in the question, did we invent Shakespeare, that is, Shakespeare's place in the literary canon, or did he invent us? He answers these questions, his answers to these questions draw much more from writers like Hazlitt, Coleridge, and other um, 20th century critics, those are not 20th century critics, but other 20th century critics who are not Bloom, than they do from Bloom himself, and especially the book being considered. And therefore, Bloom's book, no matter what's your opinion of it, and there are uh, a wide range of very well-considered opinions, seems to come off as a cipher, sort of an empty vessel upon which Wood can expatiate as he sees fit. His review of Peter Aykroyd's book, The Life of Thomas More, and the Melville essay in here uh, called The All and the If, God and Metaphor in Melville, which is mostly a review of Herschel Parker's two-volume biography of Melville, are similar in that they really are more polemical in nature, but still operate under the extended conceit of a book review. First, the lame and the bland, I guess. Uh, the essays which didn't really hold much interest for me for uh, various reasons. Um, do we really need another piece on, on how Jane Austen created successively more self-conscious and introspective characters with more actively interior lives and therefore was at least in part responsible for bringing to the fore the private internal lives and thoughts of those female characters. I mean, I thought that was a pretty well-established aspect of Jane Austen's novels. Um, if you didn't know that, you know, go read Jane Austen's novels. I think that if you read them in chronological order, that's you know, pretty apparent to any observant reader. I don't think you need a literary critic to tell you that. Um, you know, it, Towards the beginning, when she was writing, her characters pretty much had their lives were externally oriented, but as you, you know, work your way chronologically through the novels, they become more, they have more active interior lives, they think more to themselves, they become their own people in a fictive sense. And, you know, this has been done better elsewhere. I mean, if you, even if you want to read an essay like this, um, this is not the greatest place to read an essay about uh, 
the interiority of female lives in Jane Austen's fiction. And what use is it, I ask, to have Virginia Woolf described for the 72nd time at least as mystical? That is a... I, I forget the exact title of the essay. I can look it up for you. Virginia Woolf's mysticism. Well, isn't that droll? Um, no, it's it's not new, it's not thought-provoking, and it doesn't, the use of the word mysticism doesn't really shed any light on what she was doing with her fiction. So, again, a, a disappointment of an essay, a very small essay, I think, uh, in the relative scheme of things. But um, there's another one on how in Don DeLillo's fiction, um, that it's so conspiracy laden that it weakens his writing instead of strengthening it. I think that's another one of those. Well, I guess there's some really you know hardcore Delillo fans out there. I'm not sure I've ever met one. I'm certainly not one of them. Even though in the book review I just posted about an hour ago, I showed you that I bought Libra by Don Delillo. So um, I think all I've ever read is Now Two and White Noise. But I think that the conspiracy stuff kind of gets in the way sometimes. Uh, as for the first two observations about uh, Jane Austen and Virginia Woolf, they've been, as I said, fully fleshed out elsewhere and now seem a little unimaginative. Uh, I even happen to agree with the last point about DeLillo, but I certainly don't want to read another essay about it. It seems to stand on its own merits for anyone who's read almost anything he's written. Um, you can certainly disagree with the statement that it we excuse me that it weakens his fiction, but you can't disagree with the fact that a lot of it is very, very self-consciously preoccupied with conspiracy theories. There are some pieces of moderate interest, uh, including the one on T. S. Eliot's anti-Semitism. Another cipher of a book review, by the way, this time of Anthony Julius's book, Anti-Semitism and Literary Form. I haven't read Julius's book, so I can't really comment on the uh, validity of his opinions on it, but it seems like he goes hopping from poem to poem in Eliot's uh, entire body of work, anxious to, to find anti-Jewish sentiment wherever he can find it. And Wood rightly takes the effort to point out that being a bad person or having prejudices that today seem less than fashionable, like anti-Semitism, uh, doesn't necessarily make you a bad poet. In fact, there have been some amazing poets that were anti-Semites, um, Ezra Pound, for example. But I wouldn't want to leave someone with the impression that the whole book is like this. It certainly has its striking moments. Uh, in the essay on George Steiner's idea of literature and meaning, uh, mostly as presenter presented itself in Steiner's book Real Presences, Wood accuses Steiner of being what he calls theological. Uh, he suggests Steiner says something can be said about anything and therefore he runs the risk, one could liken it to Pascal's wager, almost, that meaning even really exists. I mean, it, it's, it's sort of a leap of faith to even say that, since you can say anything about a piece of literature. He also attacks Steiner's suggestion that American that uh, America lacks great art because of its liberal democratic government. I read one of the essays in Real Presences for my undergraduate thesis, which was why I was particularly interested to read a piece about George Steiner, but I don't remember the anti-Americanism in it. Um, it's an interesting observation, and I think that there's certainly an argument to be made uh, for the assertion that America, over the last two generations or so, has been producing much less world-class art than, especially literary art, uh, than the rest of the world. Uh, this is my first collection by Woods, um, supposedly one of the better literary critics writing today, but uh, 
I didn't really see what much of the ado was about, to be quite honest. Uh, I would suggest that instead of sitting down and reading these from cover to cover all at once, like I did, you read them topically as you make your way through the authors themselves. So as you read the, uh, the, New the as you read Newt Hampson, uh, read the essay on Newt Hampson in here. That might provide you with a reading that's more lasting and memorable than the ones I walked away with. Uh, despite my experience with these essays, I'm sure the uh, Soi de Saint literary critic and uh, literature admirer in me will uh, have me coming back for more James Wood in the future nonetheless. The Broken Estate, Essays on Literature and Belief by James Wood.